Hi, I'm Tracia Averitt. And I'm Carolyn Wiggins. And welcome to The Color of Success, where we showcase, motivate, and celebrate culture, creativity, and success of ordinary people. We also discuss real life topics. We have a very, very special and amazing guest today. She's a comedian, she's a mommy, and now she's a brand new author. I am so excited for you. Her <laughs> name is Mrs. Yolanda Allen. She is special to me, and I'm just full of joy because she sent me a book a fairy tale that she has written. It touched my heart so that I cannot stop talking about it. I got to tell you something, Yolanda. Thank you, first of all. I want to thank, thank you, you for, for being on our show. show, really. Thank you for having this me. This book is amazing. Oh, the book is The Chocolate Princess. Yes, yes, yes. I got to tell you something. Everything in this book is almost chocolate <laughs> and when you read it you're going to get hungry i think it's one of those books that you could just like get calories just from reading it right. well that'd be a little difficult <laughs> but it's the chocolate princess in the land of plenty where sweet things grow naturally okay so it's so, that's uh, why it's full of sweet things yes oh. there, there's lollipop lane and there's popcorn patches and even the clouds are made out of cotton candy oh yeah, 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 yeah. What little child would not want to be in the land of plenty? Yes. You gotta watch your kids when they read this book. I have a question for you. What made you, at this point in your life, I mean, Miss Comedian, Miss Mommy, Miss Everything, I happen to know that you do lots of other things. What made you sit down and write this book? Well, it was my sister and I, and it's also dedicated to my late sister. Tell us about And my it. late brother. But my, sister is, my sisters and I realized we've never had our own fairy tale. Okay. And our ultimate goal is to uh, turn this first story, at least, into a full-length animated motion picture. We've never had that either. Wow. All of the animated products uh, that have hit mainstream America mm -hmm. with characters of color have been based on real people. Mm -hmm. That's true. They've all been based on real people from Bebe's Kids to the Jackson 5. All the animated uh, products we've had, we've never had one from imagination. Now we do. She's beautiful. She's magic. She is definitely beautiful. Thank she you. is magic. I gotta tell you, um, was that your first try writing a book? Did, uh, did you do anything before that you just didn't put out? We've written a lot of stuff over okay. the years, right. and, and that was, you know, back in the day, we didn't have, we didn't have iPads, we didn't have computers, we. Didn't, you know, we were lucky if we had a color TV when yeah. I was growing up. So we had to, we, we did all of our fun and play things based on our own imagination. We would write makeup stories. We did plays for my grandmother when she would babysit us. So this has been instilled in me for a long time. Okay. My sister and I, um, we had started this project many, many years when ago. When you were little kids, did you well, dream no, up the chocolate princess? No, we just okay. pretended to be princesses. But <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> the chocolate princess came about just in, uh, a quick little conversation. Okay. I said, you know what, Val? We can draw and we can write. Let's make some greeting cards okay. with black characters, but we'll call them chocolate because everybody loves chocolate and we had a, the biggest laugh. Yeah, yeah. So we started developing characters. Wow. And then it kind of snowballed into a different story. Okay. And at the beginning of 2012, oh. I said, you know, we got to do something with all this stuff. We've outlined, we've sketched, we've done all this stuff. And we had the story. Okay. Um, it was very close to being the book but we didn't have an illustrator. I had been looking for the right illustrator for about five years. Okay. God finally sent her. Mm. Sylvia L. Walker, she captured everything we wanted her to. And when we met her, it felt like we knew her all our life. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so we knew it was perfect right. Fit. Well, you can tell that, you can <laughs> definitely tell that there was truly a spiritual connection because when I look at these illustrations, they are so vivid. They're so they rich. are so rich, yeah. 
they're, they're beautiful, the illustrations. It's, it's one of those books that you wanna see the, the pictures before you read the story because the pictures are so beautiful. And then when I read the story, the pictures were just perfect for the story. Thank and it you. just, it made my heart kind of do this little pitter-patter mm -hmm. thing. And I, I know everybody thinks I'm crazy because I've been telling everybody, I'm like, listen, this author sent me this book called The Chocolate Princess is Fairy Tale and every little boy and girl in the world <laughs> needs to have it. it. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, I feel the same way. <laughs> Everybody loves chocolate. Yeah. yeah. And chocolate comes in every shade, yeah. from white chocolate all the way to double, double fudge. That's Who's, right. What's not the love? Yeah. That's right. You're <laughs> right. You're right. So all in all, like in, in 2012, did you already have the story itself developed, or did you just, you had the greeting card, you had so many things that you thought, this is enough for me to develop a story? How long did it take you all to... to, to you know, do that. Okay, I'm not going to tell you how far back in time this first okay, came to be. Okay, you don't have to. Okay. But for this particular book, mm -hmm. we had several stories. Okay. So a couple of them got combined. Oh. And we came up with this story. And it, you know what? It was divine intervention. Because my sister and I were working on the story over, you know, over the years, and I would wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'd call her on the phone and wake her up. And I'd go, Val. We got to put some tickle'em trees in the land of plenty. And she said, tickle'em trees? Yes, girl. Leaves on the thing. They cut the can hands and, and they tickle the people in the land of plenty. And we'd end up being on the phone till the sun came up. And they, oh, I got to go shower and go to work. Me too. Okay, I'll call you after work. And this is how it all developed. Were you on the phone for hours? Hours like, at like a time. Like just hours at a time? Hours at a time. Sometimes I'd wake yeah. up at 3 in the morning. We'd be on the phone and the sun's coming up. Oh, no, we got to go to work. Let's get up. <laughs> but it was, it was a magical journey in that. We had uh, almost all of the characters developed. We had the story kind of mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. And when we finally decided, let's do this, yeah. that was January 2012. And I told her, I said, okay, we've got all this stuff. Let's do the book. Okay. And we decided to, we didn't know anything about publishing a book. We formed a publishing company. We finished outlining the, the, the story. Mm -hmm. And our search for an illustrator intensified. I found Sylvia around the end of March. Okay. And by the middle of April, she was already finishing the black and white ske sketches. She had started the sketches. Yeah. We were, um, because sometimes when you, write, when you write a story and you're going to have it illustrated, a lot of the words need to be cut out because it's, descri it's descriptive. Okay. So uh, we had to edit it down yet again so that the illustrations made sense with the story. Oh, that makes sense. I like the way you are kind of telling us how to do this, how to put this together. Um, not to cut you off, but can you tell us a little bit about how to create the publishing company? Um, we have a lot of viewers out there, I'm sure, that are looking for new little ad new adventures to get off into, but they're like, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to start it. And they would love to get can that first-hand information. Can you kind of tell us the first few steps and how you went about doing this independently? Well, when we started this idea, there was no internet. Okay. AJ and myself. Um, we went online and we found several websites that provide services, and the one that we went with is just simply called selfpublishing.com. Okay. There's a wealth of information. There's no reason anybody can't do what they need to do with the okay. information that's at your fingertips. Yes. But at this particular website, they guided us through beginning to end. We knew nothing about publishing a book. We knew how to write a book, we knew okay. how to get the illustrations done. We didn't know what it take what it took to publish a book. That website gives you a free ebook okay. that we downloaded and we had it, had it bound and it was about this thick. Wow. It covers everything from what type of book you're doing, the font size, if it's a children's book, how many pages you should have, mm -hmm. how many illustrations you should have for the story, uh, everything. And it covers every genre of book that you can imagine. And it's called selfpublishing.com. Selfpublishing.com. Okay. And then when you go through this, you realize, okay, and then you get to work, yeah. and you, you do the work. And we were fortunate enough in that um, my niece and my nephew were both, cre my family is pretty creative, but my, my nephew um, has his degree in computer animation, and my okay. niece is an architect. So 
They put their heads together and they did the layout for us. Because on some of the pages, the words will wrap around the, the yeah. illustration. So it was truly a family affair. Oh, wow. And it was a self-contained endeavor. Mm -hmm. So with the people at self-publishing, they, they will assign you a publishing mentor, so to speak. Okay. They help you choose what, what uh, printer to use. Okay. And we're glad, we're so happy we're able to see this book is printed in the United, in the USA. Yes. We had their help all the way down the line. Wow. When it came to our cover, we had this fabulous illustration to use for our color, cover, but it, this was the last piece. It wasn't quite right. They referred us to a designer who does that. Wow. A cover a, designer. The person who does, helped redesign our okay. cover, and, and the font even had to change. So when this came back to us, we were like, you're like, Whoa! get out of here. <laughs> Whoa! I, she's here. Like, she's, I did that. Yeah. We did that. She's and beautiful. It took us oh right God. back to the third grade, Aunt Teresa. When UPS showed up and they had our boxes of books, we were out on the lawn well, jumping the around. Back, too. Show the back, because the, the, even the back is beautiful. Oh, my goodness. It's so colorful. It's, it's, it's magic. This, you know, this was, a, I think, I truly think that we were, this is a gift that we were chosen to give to the world. It is. Because it, is. it yes. just flows. And, there, you know, the, the important thing, I think, is that when we were kids, we didn't have anything like this. We had, um, we had John Henry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's we, like, we had John Henry. <laughs> you know, as far as books or even in, in book form, we didn't yes. have Black yes. Cinderella. That's, That's right. true. We did no, because John Henry, remember, he was the baby born with the hammer in his hand inside of his stomach. So, I mean, we've come a long way That's kind when of you scary. look at the, <laughs> the chocolate princess. And, and here's the bad part about it. You think that's funny. I was talking to my little boy, Jaden, and I showed him the book. And um, we were talking about the different books that he had read, you know, through uh, primary school. And he knew about John Henry. Now, that scared me because I'm not going to tell you what year I was born in. But all I know <laughs> is that he should know about John Henry. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that, you know, books like this to feed the public and, and, and new children about about black people, about our life before America. It is just wonderful. Um, can you, okay, I know, I don't want to cheat, but it's so beautiful. Can, can you read one page? <laughs> or um, what please? part do you want to hear? Okay, I, I really wanted to hear two parts, okay. but I'll, I'll just go with the first part of the, you know, the very first part, the very first. The introduction. The introduction. The words. Chocolate Princess yes. in the Land of Plenty, a fairy tale by Valerie Jackson and Yolanda Allen. That's me. <laughs> Once upon a time in the West African kingdom of Zamfara, a beautiful little princess was born. She was the first daughter born to King Jamal and Queen Anis. So after having six sons, the princess was especially precious. In fact, the little princess was simply gorgeous. Cotton soft curls framed her lovely face and her smile was as warm as the sun. Her eyes sparkled like stars in the night against her ebony countenance. Her skin was dark and smooth as silk, dark like chocolate. These features she won from her father and like her mother, she grew to be graceful, elegant, and smart. The beautiful Queen Anise nurtured her little princess with dignity and love and taught her to respect all of creation. The king and queen were proud to be the parents of such a beautiful and intelligent little princess. Everyone called her little princess because within their tradition, it was customary for children of royal birth to be named on their seventh birthday. Growing up in the kingdom, the princess witnessed how mercy and justice were tendered. She learned from her father at an early age the value of fairness and respect and understood how to express those virtues. Wow. <laughs> See, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little kid. I think we need some cookies and milk here yes. and just listen to you. you Warm know. chocolate but chips. I, <laughs> Make sure you say more, more, more. Well, if you want, I can give you a little 
little synopsis. Yeah, okay, can you so, give us a couple of little, just, okay, okay. During her and then we'll get back to your interview, but I just, I need everyone to hear this because I, I don't know if I'm crazy or what, but I just love this. Okay, She's go ahead. Crazy. It's a wonderful <laughs> book. Wonderful. Well, during her naming ceremony, and, and before, up until that point, they all called her Little Princess. Yes. So it was a huge celebration the day of her naming ceremony on her seventh birthday. Okay. So... They had this big pomp and circumstance, and the drummers were drumming, and the dancers were dancing. And the elder came and gave her her gifts for her seventh birthday. They were magical bracelets, and he gave the introduction of her, and he says that you have the power to make life good. And he claps his hands, and she holds up her hands, and the bracelet and the bangles bracelet fall down, down her wrist. In the face. <laughs> they ran in the sky. Over. I love it. <laughs> Okay. okay, so King Jamal places a Sankofa locket around her neck, and inside of it, her name is, is inscribed. Okay. Before he could announce her name, however, she's stolen by the mean witch Clotilda. <gasps> and everybody gasped, like, oh, my God, little princess, little princess. Now, the one thing I love to point out is the name Clotilda. Okay. is the name of the last slave ship that came to America. Oh, really? Yes. Are you serious? I'm serious. That, that's really something. And so Clotilda steals her away and, and takes her to this strange land. It's the land of plenty where sweet things grow naturally. Oh, yeah. But during their descent and landing, Clotilda crash lands and drowns in the delicious Sippy River. <laughs> the delicious <laughs> Sippy? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so the little <laughs> princess wakes up on the banks of the delicious Sippy River, not knowing where she is or who she is. She doesn't know her name because she's lost the locket. And she's just, oh my God, what is going on here? And she hears these voices and she looks up and this voice is talking and it's the rock. <laughs> and it's Major Rap and his rapping rocks who live on the banks of the delicious Sippy River and they rap educational raps. Okay, so she learns all of this great stuff from these rocks, and she just can't believe this is really real. And she befriends, she hears another voice, it's the little boy, Frederick von Ripple. And Frederick is just enamored with this little princess, and he says, well, who are you? She says, I don't know. I don't know my name. I don't know who I am. I'm the princess from Zamfara. <laughs> he goes, well, it's going to be okay. Maybe I can take you to meet my grandfather, Professor Fudge von Ripple, <laughs> and he'll take care of you, which he did. And so in this whole vast land of plenty where all these sweet things grow naturally, Pop Fudge, as they call him, has the only real land left in the land of plenty. And he's the only one in the whole area that grows real good things. He grows vegetables and fruits, he has onions, and he has broccoli and all the good things you need. And everything else is candy. Everything, everything else, else is candy. candy. <laughs> and he fought for that land, right? He fought, he fought, he for, fought that land. for that land. <laughs> And so Pop Fudge and Fudrick take very good care of the little princess. And she, they, they create a beautiful room for her in their estate. And she wakes up the next morning and she says, maybe I was dreaming this. And she looks out the window and goes, oh, no. She sees Hot Fudge Mountain. Hot Fudge Mountain is just a mound of vanilla ice cream with chocolate and cherry on top. And as the sun melts the chocolate, they drizzle down to the bottom and it sprouts arms and legs and they become chocolate doopies, living creatures. <laughs> okay, stop. Doopies. Okay, stop. The doopies. Stop right there. <laughs> okay. See how this book is? So, so this is it's what I have to say. You have to see this book to believe oh. these chocolate doopies. <laughs> they love chocolate drops. This is, this is like incredible. When I read this, I'm like, who thinks of something like Duh. this? You know, I, I have a kid. <laughs> I've read lots of little books too. I'm like, I have never read anything like this before it's, it's just in my fun, life. Isn't it? it's so just I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask you the big question that we know that all the kids have asked and are gonna <laughs> ask. So the chocolate doopies melt down off a chocolate mountain off, off the mountain. Hot fudge mountain. Hot fudge hot mountain. mountain. With the ice cream and the hot fudge, the drips of the fudge creates little tiny <laughs> creatures. creatures. <laughs> I can't tell you about the book because there's so much more to it. But we do want to know what the chocolate doopies eat. I don't know. 
<laughs> They're just doopies. And that's the whole point of the character. Okay. They don't, they can't understand why it's so important for her to find out what her name is. And she's like. Because they're all doopies. They're just doopies. <laughs> and they just collect, they collect all the sweet things for the villains who are grim and greedy. <sighs> and so they ask the princess, well, what flavor are you? And she's like, I'm not a flavor. I'm a princess. Because they want to eat her. Because they want to eat her. Well, no, they, they want to know what flavor what she flavor is. What flavor chocolate? chocolate do, yeah, cause because <laughs> she's like, oh, you look like chocolate like us. And she's like, I don't know my name. I'm the princess from Zamfara. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what flavor? You, you look like chocolate. chocolate. So they tell her, well, you can be our princess. You'll be our chocolate princess. Oh, and that's how you came up with the name chocolate princess. That's where that came from. Oh, Because she's unique. searching for her name. Yeah. And she, she explains to the, doopy, the, the doopies how person. important it is to have a name. Yeah. They're like, oh, what, God, whatever. We're just the doopies. Yes. And so she decides to hold a naming ceremony of her own for the doopies. And she takes some of the soil from Africa and mixes it with the water from the delicious Sippy River. And <laughs> she gives them each a name oh. in a different language that means friend. Oh. And then they understand. If so you how many different languages? Are, I, I, there were a lot in there. There's, there's a lot of different yeah, languages. Yeah, yeah. And that's that so beautiful for every child to, to understand. Yes, definitely. So there's Rafiki, Amigo, Ami, Buddy, Kara, Habibi, Paisano, Pal, Taman, Shamwari, Van, and Tomodachi, just to name a few. <laughs> that is and wonderful. And they take on this name very seriously and they understand the importance of your identity yes which they had no concept of before and so the princess becomes obsessed with finding that locket and finding her name wow should i not give up no more okay. no more but carolyn and i carolyn has been bugging me she was like she is let me tell you something she has every doll that That's anybody right. could imagine, probably yes, from the 1940s Wonderful. Yeah, to now. And so she was like, well, where's the doll? And I was like, well, I, I don't know where the doll is. <laughs> it's coming. It's <laughs> and so coming. I'm going to ask you, where's the doll? It's coming. OK. That actually has been developed already. Wow. But mm -hmm. we, want, we, we had to do the book. OK. Because in my mind, and I convinced my sister, this is one way that we get it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we just like put the doll out and then did the story you and somebody the else, you don't we know haven't, is, you know, right? our control may have been taken away sure. from what, what the characters look like. Sure. So by doing the book first, it's you like it. we set the standard. It's slate. Yeah, it's it's do. already clean. It, it's locked in. This is it. This is what Major Rap looks oh. like. This is what a doopy looks like. This is what the Chocolate Princess looks so, like. So everybody really needs to hear Incredible. you because I, I know you said that actually there's some legality behind that, that that's really true, that the book has to be developed first before any type of dolls or, or movies. And it sounds like like you told us that you plan to do an animated movie and we'll have the dolls and this is definitely something a, a project that's worth going all the way out Almost definitely. because i know you're going to write other books right oh, yes oh, oh yes. Yes. three uh, two there, additional there's books, three right? in this series this is yes. the first of three okay the second story which we've already we're in almost the final draft the uh, illustrations have been um, outlined and done. They just haven't been colorized. Okay. And we're, in, we're still editing down the story. Okay. But it focuses on Fudrick's story. Oh, cool. So it's geared towards little boys. Well, listen, Yay. we can't wait to, 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 to read the story about Fudrick. We can't wait to just see this book all over every retail store <laughs> that you can imagine. And, and I know that it's going to happen. Um, at this time, we, we want to just congratulate you, Thank and you. we want to celebrate your success. Oh my goodness. And the way we do that is I'm going to let Carolyn walk you through the ceremony because she's really the best at yes. it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a celebration, and right behind you, there's a canvas. And every guest that has appeared on our show has written something on that canvas. In this uh, box, we have all the different colors that represent all the rainbow. We've Whoa. got oil painting colors, we've got markers, and we want you to pick your color that represents your journey of success, because you are a success story. Yes, you are. Thank 
Yes, and when you, you come are. back, we'd like for you to give our uh, audience your website address. Absolutely. Okay. You know, Most definitely. And where they can, anywhere else they can get more um, information about this wonderful fairy tale. Okay. Can yeah. I use two? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Everyone has Absolutely. today. You Purple is royalty and gold is hope. Oh, I love and that. Excellent. We have the purple and gold. Oh, Thank I you love colors. that. <laughs> and beautiful. You know how women do it. Okay. Um, no problem, men. But we multitask. Yes. I see you've got these not? excellent <clears throat> illustrations sitting around on easels. What's going to happen with those? Eventually, we're going to be um, we're going to sell the illustrations as lithographs. Yeah, that's all down the line. Okay. okay. You so know, we it, can't it, ask you for those pictures today, right? No, but we do have two <laughs> illustrations that we sell at book fairs when we okay. sell the book that we've we've turned into posters. Okay. And those are those are hot sellers. Do you want me to hold the book um, for you while yes. you sign the board? So we've, yes. we've done a lot of book fairs, and the next one we're doing actually is the Lamert Park Book Fair coming up in August. Oh, good! Is. And yes. this year it's going to be in the mall. Yeah. It's going to be in the Baldwin Hills Plaza, on the bridge right outside of Macy's, which okay. is a wonderful thing because last year was fabulous, but the winds kicked up, so all our easels were flying everywhere. Well, we'll come out. We'll come out and support you. Oh, please sure. sign our board. Sign I'll our sign board. your board. And, and oh, wait, before you a... leave, uh, just look into the camera and <laughs> let us know your website address. It's www.cpstorybook.com. CP Storybook, not color people, chocolate printed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the comedian in her. Yolanda Adams, the color of success. <laughs> Yolanda Allen. We celebrate you. Okay. Thank you. Yolanda Allen. Okay, you can autograph our board. Thank you. That's good. Oh, I forgot. Okay, no, no. <laughs> okay. Hold it up. I'm good. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm usually more clumsy. <laughs> I haven't broken anything on your set today. This is good. Well, I'm bad with names, as you can see. So. <laughs> no, people do that all the time. I wish I had a bank balance. <laughs> <laughs> and her voice. Ooh, I try. <laughs> okay. I can go anywhere? Yeah. Anywhere. Can you right? find a anything spot? Anything that you want. Purple How exciting! And How exciting is this? This book this is, is fabulous. It is. You gotta have it for your child's library, for yeah. yourself. Yeah. Even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it touched my heart. It, it'll be something that I will remember. And there are so many lessons in the book. I mean, she just kind of summed up the fairy tale part of the book. But the book is filled with family lessons and values that your children will be able to pass down for generations. Um, it, it's definitely a book that once they read that they will remember, and so will you. I'm just highlighting my letters. You do whatever you want on that. <laughs> I love it. Just a kid at heart. Oh, this is fun. I need a board like this at home. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have something for you guys. Okay. Oh. I know you both um, cruised through the book, but I wanted to make sure that you each have your own copy with your special oh. edition. Oh. Chocolate Princess bag. Oh, <laughs> thank you. In the bag. Oh, that is thank so you. cute. Look at that. Look at that. Look that at is packaging. beautiful. Ta -da. Well, we're going to be ending today's show. Yolanda, oh my goodness, come back. Come Anytime. back. Bring the other books. We love you so much. Anytime. Until next time, I'm Antresia Avery. And I'm Carolyn Wiggins. And this is The Color of Success. Thank you so much. Oh thank you.